Welcome to Grandad's Storytime. Please like and subscribe. I post new content every day. Paddington Bear by Michael Bond and Fred Banbury One day, Mr and Mrs Brown were standing in Paddington Station. They were waiting for their daughter Judy, who was coming home from school. Suddenly Mr Brown noticed something small and furry behind a pile of mail bags. Look over there, he said to Mrs Brown. I'm sure I saw a bear. A bear, said Mrs Brown, on Paddington Station? Don't be silly, Henry, there can't be. But there was. It had a funny kind of hat and it was sitting all by itself on an old suitcase near the lost property office. As they drew near, the bear stood up and politely raised its hat. Good afternoon, it said in a small clear voice. Can I help you? We were wondering if we could help you, said Mrs Brown. Wherever have you come from? The bear looked round carefully before replying. Darkest Peru. I stowed away and I lived on marmalade. Mrs Brown spied a label around the bear's neck. It simply said, Please look after this bear. Thank you, Aunt Lucy. Henry, she exclaimed. We shall have to take him home with us. But we don't even know his name, began Mr Brown. We'll call him Paddington, said Mrs Brown, because that's where we found him. Mrs Brown went off to look for Judy and Mr Brown took Paddington into the buffet for something to eat. He left Paddington sitting at a corner table near the window. He soon returned carrying two steaming cups of tea and a large plate piled high with sticky cakes. After his long journey Paddington felt so hungry and thirsty he didn't know which to do first, eat or drink. I think I'll try both at the same time. If you don't mind, Mr Brown, he announced. And without waiting for a reply, he climbed onto the table. Mr Brown stared out of the window, pretending he had tea with a bear at Paddington Station every day in his life. When Mrs Brown came into the buffet with Judy, she threw her hands in horror. Henry, she said, what are you doing to that poor bear? He's covered all over it in cream and jam. At the sound of Mrs Brown's voice, Paddington jumped so much he stepped on a patch of strawberry jam and fell over backwards into his saucer of tea. I think we'd better go before anything else happens, said Mr Brown, and he quickly led the way out of the buffet. Judy took Paddington's paw and squeezed it. Come along, she said. We'll take you home in a taxi. Then you can have a nice hot bath and meet my brother Jonathan. Paddington had never been in a taxi before. He found it very exciting and he stood on the little tip-up seat behind the driver so that he could wave to people in the street. Soon they pulled up outside a large house with a green front door. When they were indoors, Judy took Paddington up to his room to unpack. I haven't got very much, said Paddington. Only some marmalade and my scrapbook, and a sort of South American penny. He held up a photograph. And that's my Aunt Lucy. She had it taken just before she went into the home for retired bears. Next, Judy showed Paddington to the bathroom. As soon as he was on his own, he turned on the taps and then climbed onto a stool in order to look out of the window. Then he tried writing his name on the steamy glass with his paw. It took him rather a long time, and when he looked round, he found to his surprise that the bath was so full of water, it was starting to run over the side. He closed his eyes, and holding his nose with one paw, he jumped in. The water was hot, soapy, and very deep, and to his horror, he found he couldn't get out. He couldn't even see to turn the taps off. Paddington tried calling out, Help! at first in a quiet voice, so as not to disturb anyone, then much louder, 
Help! Help! But still nobody came. Then he had an idea. He took off his hat and began using it to bail out the water. Downstairs, Judy was telling her brother all about Paddington. Suddenly, she felt a plop. Looking up, she saw a dark, wet patch on the ceiling. Paddington! she cried. He must be in trouble. Quick! And together, they raced out of the room. Jonathan and Judy leant over the side of the bath and lifted a dripping and very frightened Paddington onto the floor. What a mess, said Jonathan. We'd better wipe it up pretty quickly. Oh, Paddington, said Judy. What a good job we found you in time. You might have drowned. Paddington sat up. What a good job I had my hat, he said. Sometime later, a beautifully clean Paddington came downstairs. Setting himself down on a small armchair by the fire, he put his paws behind his head and stretched out his toes. It was nice being a bear, especially a bear called Paddington. He had a feeling that life with the Browns was going to be fun. The end. Thank you for watching. If you like this content, please give me a big thumbs up. Please subscribe, it's free, to support us and allow us to create more great content.